Somebody say, lift up a standard. Can they hear me? Somebody say, lift up a standard. Come on. Somebody say, lift up a standard. Say, if the attack comes up against my child, God is going to lift up a standard. If the attack comes up against my child at college, God is going to lift up a standard. If the attack comes against your husband or your wife, God will lift up a standard. If the attack comes up against the church, as a matter of fact, the more the church was attacked, the more she grew, the more the church was attacked, the greater the power. Somebody say greater. The mighty say greater. Every attack that you go through, there's a greater that's released on the inside of you. Every attack you've ordained and sustained, there's a greater. Somebody say greater. Sometimes the waters don't look right. So my sisters went to Louisiana and they didn't know that a hurricane was coming through. Sometimes you can go to a place and you don't know what's about to take place. And they're there and they're in the space and all of a sudden they get news. There's somebody you're going to get news this week and it may not be favorable. Don't move. Don't let it move you. My, help me with this Holy Ghost. Don't let it move you. As a matter of fact, God is getting ready to shift it. You may even hear the bad first. There's something coming up after it. There's something coming behind it in the name of Jesus. Something that's going to be worth it after all. I'm going to give you five key things in a moment that we all must understand that if we're going to be resilient. When I begin to watch the images of what took place, I saw three police officers clinging to trees. And they were clinging to trees because they were in a flooded place. Somebody say flood. And in and, and this place, it was strange because I was looking at how they were able to cling on to trees while everything else was actually moving by them. Uh, cars were actually being swept away. Uh, houses were being swept away. Uh, but I saw three police officers uh, that were clinging uh, to trees. It kind of reminded me uh, of when we declared the song and I'll cherish uh, the old rugged cross uh, till at last my trophies I lay down. Uh, it kind of reminded me of clinging uh, to the cross. Uh, it kind of reminded me of me of clinging uh, to Christ my Lord. Uh, it kind of reminded me of holding on uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Somebody say, I'm going to hold on. Three firefighters, as I looked at the images that took place about a couple of weeks ago in Louisiana, the firefighters struggled to access. And I don't know what you're struggling to access, but I just felt an anointing release in my spirit, man. By the power of God, you are accessing it today in the name of Jesus. And a person may say, I'm not walking through it today. Yes, you have. By the power of the living God, somebody declare access. Somebody release access. Somebody say it's accessible. What was not accessible is now accessible. I hear God said some of us have been around the mountain too long. Deuteronomy chapter 2. And I hear God said the mountain is now your molehill. The mountain is now your testimony. The mountain is now that thing that you're going to move it said that you were not going to be able to move the mountain but by the grace of God somebody say by his a level of devastation makes it quite difficult near impossible to get to them I'm sitting down saying well okay Lord we understand that these things are taking place but then Paul began to speak to me and say you don't understand he says because some people can go through a devastation and they will never be able to recover from it I prophesy that we recover in the name of Jesus I declare everything about your life has recovered in the name of Jesus there's nothing missing from your life there's nothing absent from your life everything in your life has recovered and Paul said but who shall separate us. Who? What situation? What circumstance? What fire? What trial? What ordeal? Who shall separate us? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, nothing is going to separate me.
me do I got a witness in this house nothing or no one is going to separate me even if they leave it won't separate me even if they stop it won't separate me even if they take the job it won't separate I could just imagine a person said easier said than done because you have your job um, easier said than done um, you have your house easier said than done um, you have your children easier said than done when you look at the word resilience um, as I shared with you all about a week or so ago as I was studying this and the word resilience is the word silence the last about nine letters of the word resilience you have silence that takes place I said uh, resilience is the ability someone say recover someone say adjust someone say to misfortune and change somebody say recover somebody say adjust to misfortune and change so the Lord began to speak to me he says don't you understand the word silence is a part of being resilient. The word silent, because all of a sudden you know that you have to now begin to speak to your spirit man and your inner man even more than before. When you look at the book of Malachi, thank you Holy Ghost, when you look at that book, there's a silent period. What happens when the Lord goes silent on you? Has the Lord ever stopped speaking? Oh, I know you all are super deep, so the Lord never stops speaking to you. But I've had moments in my life where I didn't hear the voice of the Lord anymore. I've had moments where I said, God, I can't hear you. God, where are you? I wonder if Paul had those moments. In the midst of where he was being abandoned. I wonder if Paul had a moment and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm doing this thing for you, God. Why is it that have you ever, come on. Okay. I'm looking at some of y'all. Okay, maybe it's just me. I remember asking God these questions. And I was honest. Number one, and have you ever and have you ever done this? Have you ever whispered to God, not again? I can't do this again. Run with me to 2 Corinthians 11. Run with me there. So 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23. Media, put it up for me. Have, uh, have you ever asked God and have you ever said to him, I, I can't do this again? Okay. All right, I think I'm by myself. Anyone watching me, have you ever said that to yourself? Have you ever said in the silence, I can't do this again? God began to speak to me, and I said, God, okay, being silent is not easy, especially if you love to talk. But sometimes he will bring you to a place where you cannot say any. And so this was the first thing. I said, God, I've said to you, not again. Have you ever said, God, please help me? Not again. Okay. You may say, well, why is she saying this? Look at 2 Corinthians 2. Look at chapter 11. Hallelujah. Look at chapter 12. Look at chapter 12. I'm going to start reading from verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measures. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation there was given unto me a thorn in my what church? Have you ever said, God, it hurts too much? Have you ever said, God, I can't do this any? Have you ever said, God, please, no more? Come on, church. You know, we, we put on a face in front of the cameras. But I'm talking about when we are real with ourselves. He says, it was given a thorn in my what church? Flesh. A messenger of Satan to buffet me. God, you will allow a messenger to buffet me? You allow that thing to try and destroy me? Come on, church. You allow the flood of what they try to do come out. You will allow my mind, because then sometimes your mind then becomes in a titsy. Your mind then becomes, you begin to spin in your thoughts. And so Paul said, listen, 
unless I exalt myself above measure, something happened to me. I thought that when I came in to the glory of God and when I got born again and began to um, speak in tongues and here it is, I'm a prophet above prophet. Uh, he said, I, I'm an apostle above prof apostles. Uh, he said, I'm a Hebrew amongst Hebrew. I thought that nothing would actually, I know I was going to go through, but not at this level. And God allows Satan uh, to come and buffet me. Now, he could not allow a best friend to buffet you. He won't allow maybe a co-worker to buffet you. But God would allow something strong uh, to come up against you. Why? Uh, because he knows what he has placed uh, on the inside of you. Uh, from a little age, uh, the enemy was looking and eyeing. Uh, from a little age, the enemy uh, may have been asking for you uh, in dreams and visions. Uh, the enemy would try to meet you. Uh, and like the enemy tried to come in, uh, God will step back and say, okay, uh, I'm going to allow you to touch Bev. Uh, but you don't know what's on the inside of her. Because she came from a place uh, of intercession. Do I have anybody? Uh, that the more the enemy buffet you, uh, you are in a place of intercession. Uh, the more the enemy buffet you, uh, you are in a place of the threshing floor. The more the enemy buffet you, uh, you are in a place. Uh, your secret place uh, became more potent. Uh, your secret place uh, became more powerful. Uh, your secret place, uh, you are able to withstand anything uh, as long as you are able to get into the secret. Have you ever said, but God's still true. This is enough. Have you ever said, God, I can't do this. Look at verse 8. It says, and for this thing, I sought God. But not once. Not twice. Come on, church. How many times? I, I went to God because I know if I ask him, he said, okay, if I ask anything according to his will. Okay, he said, I will give you the desires of your what? He says, speak those things that are not as though they. So, so I, I went to him. I went to him boldly. He says, come before the throne room of grace. What church? Boldly. So I, I got up. I mustered all my strength. And I said, okay, I'm going to seek God concerning this because I don't understand why am I going through the same thing again and uh, and uh. Come on, do I got a witness out there? So I, I went to God and I sought him three times. And I knew that God will say, you know what? It's okay. It's all right. You coming out of this. It's okay. I'm going to move all of your problems away. Come on, church. I, I, and, and I paint the picture because we realize that as a body of Christ, that we don't like to go through pain. Come on. We don't like to. If you like to go through pain, raise your hand. If you like being beaten, and buffeted, uh, raise your hand. Uh, if you are used to being broken, uh, raise your hand. Uh, so we don't like any of these things. Uh, and so people would say, see, Paul, you in the flesh. If you were really, really anointed, uh, you wouldn't ask God to lift that. Ain't that something? Uh, a person can look and judge you uh, for the place of where you're at, uh, not even walk where you've walked. Uh, and they got the right, to, they think they got the right uh, to speak to you and say, well, if you, had, if you were really called of God, uh, or really chosen of God. Come on, church. You don't know what I've gone through. You don't know what she went through. You don't know what he had to pass through. You don't know the fire that he is in at this moment. And folk are going to say, then they have the nerve to say, see, if you were not in sin, this would not happen to you. If you were not walked away from Christ, this would not, oh my God, do I, let me speak to the chair. My God, my God, if you are not going through my, and people have the nerve. No one knows what's in your heart. No one knows how many times you beg God about it. How many times you fasted. Do I got anybody that went on a fast? Because you said this thing got to break by now. So I'm going to fast this thing off. And yes, the fast can break anything. But when God says no, he means no. But when God says yes, he means yes. He looks at Paul uh, and he said you are son of the living God uh, he says I'm not going to remove it from you uh, but I'm going to give you grace uh, to withstand it uh, he says I'm not going to take you out of it uh, but I'm going to give you grace uh, to stand in the midst uh, and look at your giant uh, and look at your Goliath uh, I will remove you uh, 
out of it because I gotta have a testimony. I gotta let the enemy know that I can put you in it and you won't turn back. I gotta let the enemy know I can reduce you in it and you will know I got a witness up in here that God allowed some things but you refuse to shift. You refuse to move. You said in all of these things I am more than a In all of these things, come on church, in all of these things, and everything that you've gone through, and everything that you've declared, and everything that you've decided to speak over yourself, you are more than a, three times, three times he goes to God, wait a minute, we understand the significance of three, we understand that, you know, one God manifested in three persons. We understand that there, there are three, morning, noon, and what night. We understand the importance of that three because Jesus had three disciples that went even further when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Somebody say three. We understand that a woman, has a, she carries a, a child in three trimesters. Somebody say three. Somebody say three. Three times Paul kept asking about the same thing. But have you ever said, God, not again. I can't, I can't do this. There's a silence. And after God says, my grace is sufficient. And he shuts up. He doesn't say, okay, I'm going to just put grace on you just for a moment. He graces Paul with the understanding and the power to let him know that the enemy is going to attack you. That you're going to go through some defeating times and moments and seasons. But that should not move you. You're going to want to not want to come. You're going to want to not want to go. But that should not what? So when you look at Malachi to Matthew, 400 years of silence. 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's no word. What happened when God only gives you one word? Sometimes I have a person in here or watching that says I had one word and that one word had to keep me for about one year. Sometimes we can have only one word and that one word is what's going to keep us. I could just imagine in Paul's his journey and every time he got up to preach he said his grace is sufficient. Every time he got up to preach in Lysonia his grace is sufficient. In Pergamum he said his grace is sufficient. In Antioch he says his grace is sufficient. In Jerusalem his grace is sufficient in Judea his grace is sufficient his grace is sufficient over the United States of America his grace is sufficient in Antarctica his grace is sufficient in Jamaica his grace is sufficient in Bahamas his grace is sufficient in Africa his grace is sufficient in Czechoslovakia his grace is so silent Silence has a lot to say. Listen to silence because it says everything that we can't say out loud. Silence relieves issues. It relieves stress and strain. Somebody say silence. Our silence can speak more powerful than our what? Words. Silence is full of of answers. I want to say that again. Silence is full of what? Your, your silence confuses the enemy. The enemy is not the person. The enemy we know that is that unseen personality. Enemy is not our co-worker. Amen. Not the boss. Not the church brother, not the church sister, not the pastor. There's an unseen. Jesus saw that and he said, get thee behind me. Matthew 16. But silence can confuse the enemy. Nothing creates more uncertainty than the word silent. How could God tell a group of men, I want you to go around Jericho once a day in silence. I want you to march around it. And I don't want you to say anything. I want you to keep your mouth what? And people will want to ask you, well, why are you not saying anything? Why don't you fight back? Why don't you do something? Sometimes God will say to you, don't do anything. But you got to know when it's God. Somebody say, God, 
Help me to know when it's you. Stay with me. My second thing, my second question. Have you ever, have you ever whispered in silence, Lord, when will this end? Run with me to Acts 27. Go with me, media, Acts 27 and 13. Acts 27, verse 13. Have you ever said, Lord, when will it end? So not only have I said to the Lord, Lord, how much more? I can't take this. But I've often asked God, Lord, when, am I the only one? Raise your hand if you've said, Lord, when, do, okay. Okay, some of y'all looking at me like, y'all know that. Uh, when Pastor Celia gets up and preach, she flows. I like to talk to you. Come on. So, Pastor, have you ever gotten up and said, Lord, when will it end? Have you? I know, okay, the deep and spiritual, uh-huh, I see that, uh-huh, amen. When will it end? I really can't even see it fully, but, but you have to do some markers. When will it what? Okay, look at Acts 27. Look at verse 13. And then there are five things I promise I'm going to give you, and then I'm done. When will it end? Because I think it's natural for us to ask, Lord, when will it end? Look at Acts 27. Look at verse Look at verse 13. It says, and the south, as a matter of fact, yes, and, and when the south wind blew, how did it blow? Someone say softly. So, so, Sister Gia, sometimes things can just blow so softly. And it would seem as if nothing is going to what? Happen. It says, and the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their what? Okay. All right. And so things are blowing softly. Things are blowing beautifully. Everything looked like it's going what? Well. And the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose. Loosing thence, they sail close to creek. I want to pause. The south wind blew. The moment that the south wind blew softly, Everything looked like it was going to be smooth sailing. Everything looked like it was going to be as it should. Look at verse 15. And when, look at verse 14. But when not long after arose against it a tempestuous wind, a tempestuous wind, call your rockladen. So you have one wind that's blowing beautiful. Then all of a sudden, another wind comes. And verse 15 says, and when the ship was caught, there's some times that there's some areas, there's some circumstances that causes things where, where we are caught and we don't know how we're going to make a way of escape. We know the word, but we're in a place of where it's like you're going back and for this says here, and the ship was caught. What is it that you can be caught up into? There's nothing that we can be caught up into that God is not able to deliver us out of. Us. There's nothing that we can be caught up into that God is not able to open. He says, and I will cause your prison doors to be open. And he says, and I will give you beauty for ashes. He says, and I will give you oil for all of that you've gone through. He says, I've sent a word to bind up every broken heart. He says, I've sent a word to set those who are in captivity free. What is it that you're caught into? I decree and I declare there's nothing that I can be caught into that God can't free me from. I declare that there's freedom, liberty hold. The ship was caught. It's ironic that when you read a couple of scriptures back, Paul said, I don't think that we should do this. Have you ever said to yourself, don't do it? And then you regret not listening to yourself? Have you ever spoken to your spirit man and said, but this makes sense. Why can't I? And you and I know that flesh and spirit do not agree at all. Somebody said no agreeing. So it says here that the ship was caught and could not bear up to the wind. I'm speaking to someone I don't know what you're caught up into and I don't know how they caught you I know the Bible tells us that they caught the woman in bed with the man the man was not present but they wanted to stone the woman up and I don't know what you may be caught up in in three months and I don't know what you may be caught up in with seven months and I don't know what you may be caught up with in nine months but I can tell you take your hands off of it if you allow God to stand the Bible said oh God help me look at this look at this it says and 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 they were caught
caught uh, and they could not uh, actually shift it uh, because the wind uh, was tumultuous. Uh, and sometimes uh, we can be caught into a thing uh, and we're trying to shift it on our own. Uh, but, but can I tell you that there's some things uh, that you won't be able to shift uh, on your own strength. Uh, you got to be willing to let in what church go. Look at verse 15. Can I tell you, I'm up here and I don't know if it's because of the light. I can't even see. Look at verse 15. And the ship was caught uh, and could not bear up. Uh, I decree and I declare everything that wants to come uh, in your vicinity uh, that tries to keep you captive. Uh, we break every captive thing. Uh, when the name of Jesus, uh, you will never be captive uh, into that situation again. Uh, we decree somebody stand to your feet uh, because God says you are the ship uh, and open up your mouth uh, and decree and declare that I will not be captive in this. My family will not be captive over this. My bloodline will not be captive through this. The mother will shake it in the muscle. It doesn't matter how the ship is being stared. It doesn't matter how the wind is being blown. I will not be captive. Open up your mouth and said everything that was captive in my bloodline is now loose. Everything that was a captive is now loose. Everything that was captive is now. Come on, everything, every witch that came into the bloodline that tried to sit, that tried to set a curse, that tried to set a Euraclid and win enemy uh, had planned behind closed doors. Uh, declare it. Uh, there's uh, no more captivity. Uh, it will not catch. Uh, it will not catch. Uh, in the name of if I have a mental issue, it will not connect with my child. Come on. Uh, if I went through uh, oh my God domestic disputes uh, and violence, uh, that will not be a part. Uh, some of y'all looking at me. Uh, okay, I declare uh, that everything uh, that I went through uh, in relationships, uh, my children uh, are obsolete. Uh, they are the most so about them. I follow them. Uh, it will not be a part of their cycle. Uh, it will not be a part of their testimony. Uh, open up your mouth. Uh, let the floodgates uh, of heaven open uh, and declare. Uh, no more captivity come on open up your mouth say no more captivity come on no more captivity the ship was caught we unloose everything is loose by the power of the Holy Ghost everything is loose come on simple word you may not need it now but you may need it tomorrow everything is loose I lose my mind I lose my spirit man I lose my heart I lose my emotion come on loose 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 come on loose 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 we declare loose we declare loose you open up your own self you open up your own mouth uh, and you declare loose uh, somebody say loose somebody say loose somebody say I'm loose from it 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 verse 16 says that 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 when uh, when they were running under look at verse 16 for me they were running under thank you they were running under and and when they were running under they decided to let it go sometimes things will run under and so you and I have to decide to let it what church when it was spinning out of control and they could not do anything else look at verse 22 for me go to verse 22 it's ironic that that things were spinning out of control now, it's strange because Paul then gets up and speaks something contrary to what they are facing. He gets up and says, I exhort you to be of good what? He gets up and he counters what they're witnessing. He gets up and he counters what they've experienced. Say, I got to counter it. I counter it by what I say out of my, come on. Say so everything that comes up that's not looking the way it's supposed to, I have the power to counter it. 
and I counter it by my what words. Paul gets up and he declares, okay, you in the home with your husband or your wife. And, and, and the doctor have just said this final thing concerning a situation that is happening in maybe your wife's body. You got to get up and you got to now speak what God's word says. Because the situation is fierce. The situation won't want to let her go. The situation will run through her mind day in and day out. But you got to know how to counter it with what God says. And Paul said, guess what? I exalt you to be of good what? Cheer. Five things. Write these five things out. And you and I are going to be resilient. Five things. Number one, say face them. Somebody say, face it. Paul gets up and he says, listen, there's some things you and I got to be willing to face. No more running. No more hiding. No more trying to act. You know how it is when, when you try to pass it off to someone else because you know they're able to handle it more. No, no, no. Where we're talking about being resilient, you are going to face it. We look at where David was and David decides to come into the camp of Goliath. And David decided that he was going to face Goliath by himself. We know that before then, all of Israel was facing Goliath by themselves. And David decided, I will go out and face it. Look at the person behind you. Connect with them and even bump with them. Say, God has given you stamina to face it. Say, God will give you power to face it. I know you couldn't face it last season because you didn't have the strength. I know you couldn't face it last year because you were weak in your inner man. But now there's a new you. Now there's a you that is put together. And God said, I'm going to give you the strength to stand and face the voice of it. Face the storm of it. Face the word. He said, face it. Somebody say, face it. And when I face it, I will not have fear. Learn that. There's some things that you and I will have to face. And even if you don't feel it, face it anyway. You don't got to feel it in order to face it. Somebody say face it. Jesus looks at the cross. Can I tell you that before he had to pick up the cross, he had to face the cross. Come on. There's some things that you and I have to come face to face with. And it's not until when we come face to face with the person. It's not until when we come face to face with the situation or the circumstance. That's when we have victory. Because you can never conquer anything you don't confront. I'm not running from this anymore. I'm not going to allow you to make me feel afraid about this anymore. I'm not going to allow you to speak this in my spirit anymore. I'm not going to allow you to keep projecting this thing again and again. I will face everything that the enemy may try to put against me and I will face it in the grace of God someone say face it there's some things that God will say okay it's coming back I want you to face it number two someone say embrace it if you're going to be resilient you not only have to face it but you have to be willing to embrace it sometimes when you embrace it it doesn't mean that you agree with it um but you're saying, I surrender to it. You're saying, I surrender to whatever God has designed. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, if it's your will, might this cup, come on church, remember that? He said, if it's your what will, he said, do you think we can negotiate? He said, do you think that we can maybe do something a little bit different? He said, if it's your will, can this cup be past. There's some cups we got to drink. There, there are going to be some plates that will be set before you and me that we may not want to eat from. But if it's God, come on, if God be for us, come on. Who? If who? God. So we got to be willing to embrace it. And when you embrace, God said embrace it with a heart of understanding that God knows exactly what he's doing. He says, when you embrace, embrace it with the understanding, know that if I've led you to this path, I'm going to lead you all the way through. He says, when you embrace it, you're going to embrace it with the knowledge of understanding that you are more than a what church conqueror. Somebody say, I'm a conqueror. They say, when I embrace it, it lets the enemy know it cannot have me. It lets the enemy know that I've already conquered that thing. It lets the enemy know that it doesn't matter what's been coming up against me, that what God has place on the inside of me is greater somebody say greater how could David embrace the wilderness 
except for God be in the wilderness with him. Come on, church. How can Joseph embrace a prison sentence except for God be in the cell with him? How can Ruth embrace leaving a place where she didn't even know, but she embraced her future, not even knowing what the future would be because God was in it. Somebody say, God is in this. Somebody declare, God is in this. Number one, face it. Number two, embrace it. Number three, defy it. If you're going to be resilient, if you and I are going to be able to withstand whatever that we see that's happening in these last days, we see the division in the church. Some wear masks, some don't wear masks. So some people say, because you don't wear mask, um, you're not, you, you know, where's your anointing? Then, then those who wear, who wear masks and others, people say, you need to wear masks because it's the law. So we see that the enemy has tried to come and even bring division in the where? Church. We see that some people say, well, you know, where's your faith? Because if you, if you believe God, then you would know that this, that this is not. A, can I tell you that the pestilence was sent by God because of the church? The pestilence, when we read the book of, of, of Ezekiel chapter 6, 7 and 8, and I'm not going to go there long. It was because of what was happening in the church. The pestilence, not just a pandemic, it was sent by God for correction. Why? Because God wants to bring the church back to the cross. Okay. But if you prophesy houses and cars, the church is leaping. But we're going we gonna to prophesy people straight into hell. We prophesy people. We prophesy them so much that we don't give them the truth, the meat of the world. We cannot live a life of unrighteousness and think that God will wink at it. Okay. Ain't it ironic? Some of us are so bold. Stay with me. I got about two more points. Stay with me. And ironic that some of us are so bold. We we will defy, we will defy H, A, HRS. We'll we'll defy, okay, we'll defy IRS. We'll we'll defy Department of Children and Family. Okay, you you applying for food stamps, and you know you don't have no children. <laughs> but you taking everybody. Oh Lord. You you taking. A few people, children, and you're writing them down as they're your own. Okay, we defy, we, we're willing to defy the government at times. Come on. We're willing to defy. But when God tells us to defy certain things, we say, Lord, we got to be inclusive. We got to accept everybody. Yes, we accept everybody, but we cannot stay as we are. If you're going to be resilient, you have to be willing to defy certain things. You and I got to be willing to defy every stereotype. If we got to be willing to defy what the people who want to label you as, you got to be willing to defy it. Someone say defy it. See, defying it means sometimes you have to go it on your own. You got to be able to defy every, every jealous spirit. You got to be able to defy every envy spirit. You got to be able to defy every spirit of, 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 of whoremongering. Come on, church. Come on, church. Somebody say, I'm defying it. Come on. Say, God, help me to defy it. There's some things that God, look at, when, 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 how can Joseph look at Potiphar's wife and defy what she wanted? Because she, he had to know that what God placed on him uh, was greater than what was coming up. So you look at the woman uh, who had the power to arrest you. And even in that, Joseph defied uh, because he said, how can I do this thing? Do I got a church that's alive today? He said, how can I do this thing? And sin. Somebody say, I'm going to defy it. So I'm going to defy everything that is not true. Come on. I'm going to defy every lie, everything that they put on paper. Come on. About what they said, I'm going to defy it by God's grace. When you're defying it, you look at a candle. Think about how a candle, it defies darkness. You light a candle. It defies what church? Darkness. The Bible says you and I are a city that's upon a hill. We are a candle. 
We cannot be covered up. We cannot be put under a bushel. So look at how a single candle can both defy and define darkness. God has put you and me to defy certain things. He has put you and me. In your family, you may be the only one that's able to defy whatever the it is. In your family, you're the only one that's able to stand and said, I will stand and be that intercessor. Somebody say, I'm defying it. God says, face it. Number two, embrace it. Number three, defy it. Number four, resist it. If you and I are going to be more than conquerors, we have to face certain things. If we're going to have a resilient mindset, we're going to have to embrace certain things. And we have to understand that we have to be willing to defy. And be willing to defy, you got to be willing to say, God, though they slay me, come on, yet will I what? They want you to do something in the job. It's underhanded. But they're now trying to cajole you to do it. And it's against your belief. It's against what you stand. You got to be willing. You will either comply or you will defy. Number four, resist it. What's number one, church? What's number two, church? What's number three, church? What's number four, church? Resist, the Bible says. I hate thank you, Holy Ghost. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to. He says, resist. The enemy. Well, we can't resist the enemy. Um, just because we come to church. What are we doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Somebody say, resist. Um, you and I know, those of you in the medical field, you know a lot more about this than I do. Um, when our immune system is low, what happens to our resistance? It's weak, right? We can't afford for our spiritual immune system to be what? Weak. You and I know that we live in a time and a place where there are some things that will be presented to us. And if you and I don't have true foundation in Christ, we won't be able to resist it. There's a place where God has taken you to. And he says, I'm increasing you. I'm going to increase your capacity, but you got to know what to embrace and you got to know what to resist. There's sometimes the resistance is not going to be easy. Come on, church. I'm almost done. I promise you I'm done. There's sometimes the resistance is going to play, bring you to a place of where you're feeling stretched. Go to Romans 8 and verse about 37 for me. I'm going to close there. Somebody say resistance. But if God brings you to a place, God says, I'm able to allow you to resist. So you got to resist the voice of the, what does the enemy say to you when you're about to walk through something awesome? What does the enemy say to you just when you're at the midst of having the breakthrough? The enemy comes the loudest when we're trying to walk through our necks. The enemy comes the strongest when God is getting ready to open up the sea. Moses is at the Red Sea and he looks and everybody is looking at him and the sea almost resisted him. I prophesy in the name of Jesus what resisted you yesterday you have now the power to resist today and yesterday I'm not talking about the date of yesterday it could have been three years ago it could have been four years ago you have the authority to now resist it today what you couldn't handle somebody say I'm able to handle it today I decree and I declare your spiritual resistance has increased you remember when you were going through and you couldn't feel like you could ever get your balance I remember I remember when my feet was not working uh, and I began to still prophesy in order to resist uh, you got to be able to prophesy uh, in order to resist uh, you got to be able to speak to that thing again uh, and again uh, and again uh, and again uh, and again for 40 days uh, Goliath is speaking uh, to the children of Israel uh, and Goliath calls uh, an entire nation uh, to resist his voice uh, one young lad gets up uh, that's why God calls the little children. One young lad gets up, says, do you hear this uncircumcised Philistine? Why are you allowing him to speak so much? Last thing. Why are you allowing him to speak? So Paul is saying, and all of what I've gone through, he said, I resist the tribulation. He said, I resist the beating. He said, I resist the scourging. 
He said, three times I was shipwrecked. That didn't stop me. He says, as a matter of fact, when they threw me over a wall, he said, that did not stop me. Why? Last thing, conquer it. Conquer it. We decree and declare that we have conquered it. Raise your hand if you know that this thing is conquered. Whatever your thing is, that it's conquered. Come on. That it's conquered. That it's conquered. You have to know that you have already conquered it. You have to know that God has already given it to you. God has already declared that you are not just a conqueror, but you are more than a. It will never conquer you. If you got to cry through it, know that you've conquered it. If you have to fast through it, know that you have what? Conquered it. If you have to even give it up. Because sometimes to conquer it, you got to be willing to give it. Stand to your feet. Paul said, in all of these things, he said, in everything that I've gone through, he said, there's a resistance in my spirit, man. He says, in my spirit, I know that this is not the end. But this is the beginning. Somebody say, I'm a conqueror. There's some things that God will allow you and me to face. Not so it can conquer you or me. So that we can. But we have to be willing to, be willing to number one, face it. Number two, embrace it. Number three, deny it. Number four, resist it. And when we do that, we're able to number five. What's number five, church? conquer it. Father, we thank you. Father, we know that you are God all by yourself. You said, is there anything too hard for you? So God, because we know there is nothing too hard for you, we declare that we have a spirit of a conqueror. Paul said, nay, don't we know in all things work together for good for them who are called. God, because we are called, I want you to begin to pray right where you're at. Open up your mouth and pray. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. Right where you're at, come on, open up your mouth and pray. Come on, right where you're at, open up your mouth and pray. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, open up, open up, open up. In the name of Jesus, release, release out of your mouth. Come on, don't whisper a prayer. Come on, really begin to pray. Come on, begin to declare. In the name of Jesus. Begin to declare what God has said in the name of Jesus Christ. There's some things that in this season, I may have to face it in the name of Jesus Christ. There's some things that will want me to fall, but I refuse to fall in this season in the name of Jesus. There's some things that you may be facing. I want you to know that God says that you are resilient. I'm reminded of when I was looking at the man in, in Louisiana, and he's looking at all the wreckage around him, and he's looking at everything that he had gone through. Come on, pray, church. Come on, pray, church. Come on, pray, church. And he's looking at a place where there's no way to come back. And all of a sudden, his lights came back on. Three weeks later, the lights came back. God said, you're coming back stronger. You're coming back wiser. You're coming back out of it. You're coming back in the name of Jesus. You're coming back in the name of Jesus. You're coming back in the name of Jesus. There's some things that you're going to face. You're going to overcome it. There's some things that you're going to embrace. It will not swallow you. And God will give you the strategy to embrace it. There's some things that you are now able to defy. You were not able to defy it before. But the spirit of God that dwells on the inside of you. Now you have the power. Because the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God. We declare that we're not just conquerors. But we're more than a conqueror. After we defy it, God, then you say we can, oh God, in the name of Jesus, resist. And then you say we are able, God, to conquer. I decree a conquering anointing. I want you to declare out of your mouth, I'm a conqueror. I'm a conqueror in the name of Jesus. You may not have the feeling of a conqueror. You don't got to feel it to know that you are a conqueror. You have conquered that thing. You have conquered it. It did not waste you. It cannot destroy you. You are a conqueror. Because Christ that dwells on the inside of you. Breathe God upon this house. 
I thank you, God, that you said that life empowerment is a conqueror. I thank you, God, that you said there's no fire that can burn us. There's no battle that will turn us. There's no mountain that will stop us. There's no bankruptcy that will cause us to shift because we know that you hold our hand. You said that we're more than a conqueror. In the name of Jesus, now, God, extend the spiritual walls, the spiritual walls of every individual in this place. God, we decree your word is risen. Your word that tells us that we're resilient. Your word that tells us that in the midst of when we were almost about to lose, oh God, you came up and you lifted up a standard. We're more than a conqueror. Come on, declare I'm a conqueror. Declare I'm a conqueror. See, everything God says, it's working for my good. I want to declare that it's working for my good. Say everything is working for my good. It's working. God is working on it. It's working. It's working for my good, my good, my good, my good. Said it's working for my good. Come on, declare that it's working. Everything in this house is working. Every individual, in the name of Jesus, God said that he's working it for your good. God says everything that you thought was not working by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the might of his word, he says it's working and you got to know, you got to know, don't let your flesh, oh God, beguile you, don't let your flesh lie to you, don't let your flesh, because your flesh will never speak the truth, but your spirit man says it's working for my good, it's working for my good. It's working for my good. It's working for my good. I prophesy to you. There was a sign that was held up. I can't read the sign when I'm flowing. I can't. And so I want to declare to you that it's working for your good. I want to speak that it's working for your good. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm glad you received the word, woman of God. It's working for your good. Come on, declare it's working, it's working. It's working, it's working. It's working. How many of you know it's working? How many of you know it's working? And what you don't know, what you don't understand, God said, I'm going to bring all the pieces together. He said, I'm going to bring in everything. He said, I will bring in every piece that you need to see how I'm going to work this thing. But you got to declare and keep your faith that it's working for my good. Father, I decree in this house, that you said that we are giant killers. That you say, God, that we walk in the authority of the conqueror. And you say, God, that any Uruklin win. You said any perils, any, 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 anything in trepidation. You said anything, any, any shipwreck. You said any scourging, any beating, anyone that may have abandoned. You said whatever it is, you said we're more than a conqueror. In the name of Jesus, I want you to declare, I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. I'm a conqueror. What could have killed and what did kill so many? God allowed you to conquer it. He allowed you to withstand it. He allowed you to bear up under it. He allowed you to be sustained in it when others could not handle it. He gave you the strength, the spiritual vigor and vitality to be sustained in it. More than a conqueror. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. There's fresh oil that's been released in this house. There's a fresh move. There's a fresh mind. So when Paul said, none of these things, he says, nothing will separate me. That's a conquering spirit. When you say it doesn't matter what happened, this won't separate me from God. This won't separate me from his love. This won't separate me from salvation. This won't separate me from the house of God. This won't separate me from doing kingdom work. This, I will not live a separate life. But I will live a life where God is in. I live a life where God, in the name of Jesus, is my Alpha and Omega. He's Alpha Omega at the same time. 
So God, I commit myself. I want us to declare a new covenant unto God. Renew your covenant unto God. Right where you're at, if you don't know Christ. I don't know when you're going to watch this tape. Maybe you will watch a minute of it. But right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we declare that you are King of Kings. Raise your hand. Father, we renew. Renew your covenant with him. Father, I renew my covenant with you. Father, I thank you. Today, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I renew my walk with you. I renew my mind with you. I renew my life unto you. Jesus, today I walk in a conquering spirit. Father, I thank you. And no more I will ever allow what has come up against me to speak contrary. But today I declare a conqueror. Come on. I declare I've conquered it. I declare whatever I've gone through, I've conquered it. Whatever I've had to have been exposed to, I came out of it. Whatever took place in my life, I conquered it. If Christ conquered the cross, because you are in him, you have also conquered it. In Jesus' mighty name, give God glory in this place. Give him glory in this house. Come on, give him glory in this place. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Give him glory. Give him glory in this place. Give him glory. Can I get it to clear? A seven hallelujah. 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 We give God glory in this place. Hallelujah. I'm going to do one more thing. If there's something you want me to touch and agree with you in, come at this time. If there's something you want me to touch and agree with you, come. I need help. I need help with the anointing oil. If there's something that you want me to touch and agree with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you, oh God. Thank you. I'm touching and I'm agreeing with you in the name of Jesus. Father, I hear embrace. I hear embrace. So God, everything that your daughter has to embrace. Thank you, media. Everything that your daughter has to embrace. Come on. Keep the make sure you're keeping. I want to pray. If you're watching and there's something that you want me to touch and agree, let us know so I can do that for you. I will read it once I'm done ministering to these people. I hear embrace. There's some things that you've not want to embrace. And I hear clearly from God. God said, if you embrace it, your business is going to overflow. He says, you're waiting. You keep waiting. And he says, I've been waiting on you. He says, how much longer am I going to have to wait on you? I'm going to be honest with you. When I touched you, all I saw was the word was embrace. God says you must embrace what he's asking you to do. He says, you want him to embrace the vision and the dream that you have. But he says, what about you embracing what he told you to do? God, if I be a prophet of the living God. So God, now I speak that your daughter will embrace. What was difficult for her to embrace? Father, I speak, God, that the walls are torn down. Father, that she'll be able to embrace it fully. That she'll be able to embrace it without wondering in her shitters and kudas. God said, no more shitters. No more kudas. In the realm of the spirit, you, you always doubt. I hear it's like a what if. God said, not this time. 
He, he said, not this time. He says, this time is going to be different. He said, I want you to embrace. And he says, as you brace it, he says, everything is going to be lifted. Lifted off of your family. Lifted off of destiny. Everything is going to be lifted. All I hear is God say, embrace. And now I touch and agree with that what you're asking God for. Father, I speak that it will speed up. I point to your feet and I speak spiritual acceleration. That you say, I feel like I'm behind. But God has now accelerated. You are now on schedule. In the name of Jesus. I speak that everything that needs to be scheduled is now on schedule for you. Great woman of God. Great woman of purpose. Great woman of vision. No more vacillation. God say embrace it. Do you receive it? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I don't know who you are. Father, I thank you for your son. I come and I touch in agreement with everything that you've ordained for his life in the name of Jesus. I hear the word cut. I hear the word cut. It's as if there's some things that you had to cut off, you had to release, and it was a quick shift. It was a quick cut in the name of Jesus. God says, I'm going to bring your Joseph. Joseph in Hebrew means to add. He says, I'm adding. When you read the word of God in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33, when, when Moses is speaking over Joseph, he says, you're going to be like a vine. You're going to run over the mountains. You're going to run over the wall. He says, you're going to pierce through. And I hear the Lord said in the name of Jesus, not many days, and I'm hearing three. I'm not saying that it's going to be three days, but I'm hearing within three, within three, whatever the within three is in the name of Jesus. And I see there are three men. There are going to be three men that you're going to reconnect yourself with. There are going to be three men. They're going to be instrumental in this next walk of your life. God, even as you have to call Elijah to where Elisha was. And Elijah was instrumental in Elisha's walk. Even as when Jonathan was called to walk with David. Even as when Joseph was called to walk with Moses. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak over this vessel. God, I touch and I agree. In the name of Jesus, you know Christ is your Savior. You've received him. You've received him as Lord and Savior. Yes. So God, now there are going to be three men, three, either the next three days or the next, but I see three men that are going to be instrumental. One will be a mentor to you. One will be a mentor, begin to teach you and train you because you're not like any other man. The anointing that you carry, and there's such a meekness in your spirit, man. So much so, folk think that you're, you're, they, they mistake your meekness for weakness, but it's not so. Not at all. Now, God, I decree a resurrection anointing upon you. You walk under the apostolic anointing. I don't know what church you go to, but I decree a resurrected anointing over your life. In the name of Jesus, everything that was broken... I just see things coming up all around you. I want to walk around you. I see everything coming up. Everything coming up. Everything coming up. I just see everything coming up. And not only do I see everything coming up, I see everything shooting up. Shooting up out of the ground. In the name of Jesus, shooting up out of the ground. In the name of, I just see things shooting up all around you. In the name of Jesus. So God, now you said, is there anything too hard? So God, now I speak over your son, your servant in the name of Jesus. And I hear the Lord said, don't worry about that. He's already settled that case for you. Don't know what the case is. He says, don't worry about it. He's going to say, and you won't even have to pay it. Oh my God. I received that from me. You won't even have to pay it. 
they're going to write it off. In the name of Jesus, and do you receive? And so it's done. In Jesus' name. I'm touching and agreeing. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I touch and I agree with your daughter. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are the one that has brought focus and purpose. When power meets power, the lesser power has to chill. When power meets power, the lesser power has to chill. Is that not right, minister? Is that not right, minister? When power meets power, Rock, 
Ratobo Ratinabosoto Rako Shababa Retebano Ratu Rabato. You are a ruder. Soto Reke Shababano Rutu Shababa. You are Rutabando Koto Rutu Nereba. You deal with the root. Rabo Sheke Nerebo. You don't deal with branches and leaves. Raboto. What I'm hearing in the realm of the spirit, that you are a rooter. Reke Sheba. That's the reason why I touched your hand. And all I heard, the Holy Ghost said, when power meet power. And the enemy is trying to attack your body. But today he stops. Today, I just saw heart attack. Today, Soto. I just saw pressure. Come on, pray with me. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, church. Pray. I'm almost done. Up. But it won't work. In the name of Jesus. Father, iron, sharpen iron, I sharpen you. May you be sharpened in the name of Jesus. May you be sharpened. Your eyes, I reconnect your eye. Oh my God, that you're able to see and call it. Pray church, I'm almost done. If you're watching, I'm praying for you. If you're watching, I'm praying for you. That you're able to see it called Robo Soto and call it. And the Lord said he's given you power for it. He's strengthening you in the name of Jesus. I see it's like they try to put something to block you. It's like they try to put something in your path in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of God, God just said I've moved it. In the name of Jesus. He said, I've moved it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give God glory for what he's doing for this woman. He says, I've moved it. In the name of Jesus. And now I store, I stir the fire in you. I stir the power in you. I stir the anointing on her emotion. <laughs> I hear the Lord says you're going to give birth to it. It's not a physical baby, but it's what you've been believing for. You're going to give birth to it. It's your ministry. It's what he's called you to do in the name of Jesus. And I speak your divine alignment in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I speak to your umbilical cord in the realm of the spirit. That your line has gone out into pleasant places. I see work in Jamaica. I see work for the kingdom in Jamaica. I not only see physical work, but I see kingdom work in Jamaica. And I see you rooting up the ground in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, God, from border to border. You will extend what your daughter's desire is. You will extend the work of her hand. And your hand will not be weary. For you shall build it. In the name of Jesus. By the way, the work can be her connecting with key people to work the work there. In the name of Jesus. But I see work in Jamaica. Am I right? Yes. Great work. Mighty work. Now God send the resources. Every thief. In the name of Jesus. We declare no more theft. We speak, God, that everything will come in as it should in the name of Jesus. Shake my hand again. I hear the Lord says, there's a shaking that's happening. There's a shaking that's happening. And I also see, Lord, should I? I also see you literally shifting and shaking hands on something that's going to bring in more income for you. In the name of Jesus. Because where you're at, it's just only temporary. It's only, and I even hear you saying, it's only temporary, no man. It's only temporary, no man. Yes, because I see it in your conversation. I decree and I declare by this time next year, permanency 
an increase in what you believe in God for? Do you receive it? And it is so. Why? One more thing. Why do I see a lot of pots and pans around you? I see you're what? Oh, my God. Did you all tell me that? Did you tell me that? All I saw was pots and pans. And I said, I saw you in this kitchen. Father, I thank you. God, that as she made it happen for someone else, do it for her. Do it for her. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, we give God glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at you. What's your name? You know, I'm looking at her and I thought I was seeing Sister Gia. But then I'm looking at her son, right? Your son. And I'm like, but that doesn't look like Allie, Addie. What's your name again, beloved? Monique. Father, I thank you for Sister Monique. Come on, stretch your hands towards her. Father, as she is coming to this space, this is the first time I've ever seen her. I pray, God, that you will draw her back to this place. I speak, Lord God, that what her needs are. to be so. Somebody say three. Somebody say three days. Somebody say three weeks. Somebody say three days. Somebody say three weeks. God, do it within three days. Do it within three weeks for your daughter. I touch and I agree with your daughter. You know Christ as your Lord and Savior. You received him. As your, and you know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. See, because we can, we can give a word, a prophecy, but we got to make sure that's the most important thing. Amen. That we're in, in the kingdom. Listen, you're going to come back and give the testimony. You're going to come back and it's going to be something beautiful in the name of Jesus. Do you receive it? And God said, because you've received it from his mouthpiece, expect it to be so. Amen. Give God glory. Come on, give him glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I come now in the name of Jesus. I lift this new business idea up. I lift this business up in the name of Jesus. Father, you're the God that plants. You said one plant, one water, but you're the one who gives the increase. But Father, you plant the idea. Father, as your daughter is asking in the name of Jesus for the business to be lifted. So God, we lift this business in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing online as well as um, 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 face to face, but I see really an online business, an online platform. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that you're going to give her the funds. I thank you in the name of Jesus that everything that she needs, that, that, that the traffic of the business, God, will grow. Somebody say grow. Somebody say increase. And so now we lift this business unto you. And God, because she is faithful. God, I know that this woman of God is faithful. She doesn't even come here physically, but she's faithful, supporting us online. So God, now we decree and declare, it is so. Somebody say business, manifest. Somebody say business, manifest. Somebody say business, manifest. Somebody say business, manifest. And it is so. Receive it. Sissy Evangeline, I speak within three and three. I speak three, three, three. Three days, 
or three weeks, and by the end of the third month, when you start your business, you're going to see the shift and the glory. May God give favor. May he grant your business favor as you walk in obedience unto him. And as you keep him first, your business will thrive. We speak thriving in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church say, I put it back in Pastor Celia's hand.